So we are a mid-sized university, and that allows us to have hands-on, one-on-one interaction with our students and our faculty. So our programs all really focus on student interaction with faculty. Students get engaged in research, so about 40% of our students are doing research or design or discovery by the time that they graduate. And I think that that is one of the signatures of our programming here at UMD. Before beans get roasted, they're referred to as cacao, and after you roast them, then they're referred to as cocoa. So these are our cacao beans. We're about to transform them into cocoa beans. Can you create the ultimate chocolate bar? And if so, how are you going to do that? And what variables go into making a chocolate bar? So in chemical engineering, we look at taking in raw materials and making products and using a set of steps that we call unit operations. And all the steps in the cocoa process are pretty classic chemical engineering unit operations. And I just thought this would be really easy and really great to add to our curriculum. It'll help our students see a really good system. And I thought it was something that students would get pretty excited about. I'm Dr. Craig Hill. I'm from the Mechanical and Industrial Engineering Department here at UMD. I'm teaching sustainable energy systems, and it's a chance for students to think about different forms of renewable energy. Lake Superior, especially today, is a great place to come and get the students, you know, first-hand experience looking at the waves and thinking about how much power is actually in the waves here on the Great Lakes. We're, we're here just at the beginning of a storm that's about to roll in, so right now the waves aren't all that big, maybe half a meter or so, uh, but over the next 24 to 36 hours, they're gonna build upwards of 10 to 15 feet in this part of Lake Superior. Uh, these storms, as many people in Duluth know, and all of our students at UMD, they bring an immense amount of power. And so today we're gonna be talking about how much power actually is in those waves. I like to give the example of how much power is just in the width of our arms. So if you stretch your arms out for those 10 foot waves, there's about 40 to 45 kilowatts of power, which on average is about enough power to provide energy for about 45 typical Minnesota homes. It's a great environment to get our students down here and see the waves firsthand and really feel that power in the wind and the waves. Mercury is a, a complicated pollutant that can exist in the air or in the water or in the soil. There are local historical industrial activities in particular that have added mercury to the ecosystem in the St. Louis River and opportunities for us to limit the movement of that legacy mercury into the food web, they're tricky. This is the UMD Research and Field Studies Center. Projects that seek to remove all the contamination are expensive, and the context for what we're doing here is that rather than removing all of those contaminants, but also the sediment that it's mixed in with, we're hoping to add kind of a low impact amendment to the soil and reduce the amount of mercury that can get out without kind of destroying the whole system and digging everything out. Our industry partners, they partner in many different ways. And so some of it is providing the means for students to go to college. So we have a very active scholarship program for students that's funded through industry partnerships. We also have a lot of students doing senior capstone work in collaboration with industry partners. So the industry partners may propose a project or a problem that our students will work on during their senior year. And then the students present that work back to the industry. Here are some different solutions to the problems that they've given to the students. We have a lot of interns that come on, specifically UMD, that really stick around. They love the area. And the benefit of that is we are able to train them as interns and then kind of seamlessly move into that full-time position where they're actively working on projects right away and they already had that training at an internship level. That's really our mission is to inspire the next generation of STEM professionals to solve complex problems and I think we do it well and I'm really excited about the programming that we have coming that'll allow us to really live that from 
from day one in a student's career.